escape the nine to five and create your path to freedom. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Corporate Escape Stories. These are episodes where I interview and speak to inspiring people that have left their nine to five to create freedom-based businesses that support them in living the life that they want. I am Lydia Lee, and I'm the work reinvention coach and freedom instigator at Screw the Cubicle. If you're new here, welcome, and don't forget to hit subscribe and the notification bell button to be the first to know whenever I release a brand new episode on this channel. And today, I cannot wait for you to meet my guest, Chrissy Lamb, who is the founder of the Love Is Project. So Chrissy left a 12-year career in corporate fashion to create a sustainable and ethical jewelry brand that creates jobs for artisan women in developing countries. Now, if you've ever thought about making meaning with making money, you're going to love how Chrissy talks about merging fashion with philanthropy. We also dug into how she started a business using her experience, her connections, and her skills, why she didn't end up pursuing, almost didn't end up pursuing her business, and the true skills that she learned as an entrepreneur to be featured at the likes of Oprah Magazine, and most recently, you might have watched her here, uh, pitching to the sharks on ABC's Shark Tank. So without further ado, here is my interview with Chrissy Lamb. What if I told you that this handmade bracelet is changing lives around the world? What started as just an idea has now grown into a movement and people are noticing. This yeah. is the Love Is Project. It's even caused some thoughtful celebrities to share their own messages of love. I'm Chrissy Lamb, founder of the Love Is Project. In 2012, I left my corporate fashion job in New York City to move to Kenya. I wanted to help create jobs for women using my background in network and design and marketing. Immediately, I was inspired by the incredible beadwork of the Maasai tribe. And together, we created the original red love bracelet. All right, Chrissy Lamb, thank you for being on the show. Hi, thanks for having me, Lydia. Now, usually, I mean, you are in Bali most of the time. We would have been doing it in real life, but you are in San Francisco, right? At the moment. Yes, in, yes. The tropics. <laughs> I've been locked out of Bali for a while just because of the pandemic. <laughs> so hopefully in a few months, I can get back there. <clears throat> yeah. And, I, you know, I really appreciate you coming on because I know um, since the recent developments of you being on Shark Tank and all the great publicity you've been getting for your business, it's like you're a busy woman. So <laughs> I really appreciate you like actually remembering me and kind of going, yep, I'm willing to talk to you and share my story, which is awesome. And I think um, even more, actually, when people are watching Shark Tank at the moment, they want to learn a lot about what what was what's the origin story, you know, of the Love is Project, what's going on uh, with you, you know, and also your relationship with your mother, right? That showed up on Shark Tank with you, which we'll talk about um, yeah. as well. But I, I like to start off um, these interviews with with a personal question, you know, so that we can actually know more about what what helped shape you as a person and what were the influences in your life that, you know, you, you've been evolving from potentially. Um, so how has your family and your cultural background shaped your identity? And how has like your own personal identity shifted over the years as an adult as well? Um, yeah, I think, you know, uh, my parents have instilled a very like strong work ethic. And, you know, also, I think I was, you know, able to travel when I was younger, we lived abroad in Hong Kong and, and, and traveled to Asia. So that kind of like, got me really interested in travel and other cultures as, as a kid. Uh, I was born here in the States and in, in the Bay Area. And um, I think they always were very like, open for me to try, you know, from like taking art classes, gymnastics, you name it, like, photo you know, interest in photography. Um, so they always helped wanting to like want wanting me to be able to be inquisitive and learn. So um, that definitely uh, has helped me throughout my whole life, because I think I, I really am always wanting to discover and, and try new things and meet new people. So um, and and I think, you know, um, you know, even like to, to take risks, I think, you know, they took a risk uh, coming to the United States, you know, as immigrants and make a better life for themselves. It's like, I feel like in, in a way, you know, like whether it's like me leaving to study in, in New York or like leaving my corporate job to do new things and, and, and take that, those leaps of faith. It's like, I feel like confident in my abilities and my, uh, you know, my life to be able to manifest like what I want. So, mm. yeah. I mean, we both come from, um, you know, that that Asian family background where we have had many laughs over <laughs> how similar our quote unquote tiger moms are. Right. Like there's a, a beautiful lessons that we learn from being being part of an immigrant family, you know, like the mm. the, the, the heart 
uh, you know, wor working hard ethics, being able to go for what you want, even though you don't think you can have it, you know, just that tenacity, I think that comes from going into a foreign country and making something of yourselves, right, which I think you and I have both got that from our mothers. But then there's mm -hmm. also this pressure, right, of like, mm -hmm. because they gave up so much, and they sacrificed to get you to a better opportunity, there's expectations, you know, and standards of where, um, you know, we, we want to be living, uh, or how we should be living our lives that are in that standard of what our parents believed we could have been having. Uh, and that can sometimes um, be a bit of a toll, right, on the decisions we get to make. Did you feel at all like as you were when you decided to quit your job um, that there was sort of someone to answer to, like your mother, that you had to explain why you might be giving up a, a good six figure, you know, benefits paying job uh, to go after something different? Yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely like, caution, you know, they were very kind of worried or cautious of like, oh, what am I doing? What am I going to do? Is this profitable? But you know, I think I came across that even like, when I was about to go to art school, too, they were always like, what are you going to do? Are you going to be working at Starbucks? You know, no, I got a great job. You know, like, I have to prove them wrong. If I always I've always had to prove a lot of people wrong, you know, like, and I think, um, knowing that, like, like I said, like, I am like, you know, my grandparents on my both my sides of my my grandmother, and my grand, my grandfather, my dad's side, uh, they no, were never able to go to school. My grandmother, on my mom's side was self taught, self taught herself how to read my my grandmother, my grandfather, on my dad's side was not able to. So like the fact that like, and what within like two generations, like I'm able to, you know, I'm going to college, I can do this, I can go back and, you know, uh, be able to give that create, you know, do what I want and help others and stuff like that. Oh my God. Like, it's amazing. Like, um, I think it's, you know, I think I'm giving, I've been given a lot, you know, and I'm very lucky and it's like, you know, not squandering my privilege, you know, and I'm, I'm, and I think that's really important. And, and I think they see that they, like, I think it's like, I'm, I'm passionate. Like I, I, and if I, if I want to do it, like, it's like, I think so much is like entrepreneurship or just in life. It's like, it's like how bad you want it. Like, you know, if you really want it, you're going to, you're going to do it. You're going to get it done. And I think, I think at some point it was after corporate, like after 12 years of it, which was a great gig, I just didn't have that same passion for it anymore. And I, I something I was trying to figure out how to man, you know, like get, you know, manifest like what the life I wanted to live and the career I wanted and what, what I like, what I wanted to be doing, you know, so mm. that's. Yeah. So, well, yeah. let's talk, let's talk about that that piece of the story actually, because mm -hmm. it wasn't it wasn't like a uh, you know an overnight moment, right? Yeah. That you decided mm -hmm. that I'm going to leave a 12 year high powered career and yeah, you know, yeah, all the contacts yeah. I've built, yeah. all the sweat and tears that I've done. You know, yeah. corporate fashion is a competitive um, industry, and you mm -hmm. do a lot of work to get to the top, right? And to mm -hmm. get to a place that mm -hmm. uh, you feel proud of your reputation mm -hmm. and the things that you've mm -hmm. done. So, what what what's the background around like what instigated the the design desire to want to do something different and how did you make that transition into developing uh this 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 business called the Lovis project yeah so i mean i left um i took a sabbatical first like before i left my job completely so i took a three-month sabbatical in 2008 so after i had been working in corporate for 12 eight years uh, i was uh working uh, volunteering out in rwanda connecting creative friends of mine to rebrand ngos raising money and and uh while you know while i was there obviously like learning more about development and all that stuff it was just like how that the fact that like charity is not a sustainable model you know like it is not you know like and true empowerment is about job creation for the women to be able women to be able to support themselves and their families and um so um i think by you know learning that lesson you know and also the kind of like where my talents kind of what i can lend to this um was like the fact that like um my background is in design in marketing in uh and, and my network and stuff so i was to be able to leverage that you know like meet these artisans who were able to make things and i was you know traveling to other countries and seeing stuff at the markets is like creating the by helping them create the right product for the western market and how to market that product and essentially get that product mark you know product to market uh so i felt like it's like not teaching they already know how to fish right it's like really preparing the right fish and um you know getting the fish to market market that's where i come mm. in and, and i and i i so that's um once i decided to leave corporate a few years later because i came back to to new york there was a recession like i was lucky to have a job i was still trying to figure out i was like okay well what am i going to do i'm going to like leave my job and work for a nonprofit. Oh, I don't know if i can want to do that like what you know like i was confused at how how to do this and i think you know there was a lot of steps in the way like i was still kind of doing this on this as a side like side hustle um 
my, it wasn't like sustainable, like financially for me, you know, I needed to have a job. Like it was like just me trying to help facilitate like partnerships and ra raise some money. Um, uh, so yeah, like once, you know, when I left corporate, I, I will, before I left corporate, I was actually thinking, I was like, okay, I want to help. I want to change the industry from within, you know, like change the dinosaur, change the big brands, you know, like, which is like trying to turn a big ship, like the Titanic, you know, <laughs> like, you're like, okay, I want to have them sourcing from artists and groups, you know, like, it's like, um, and so, yeah, I was trying to, I was pitching artists and groups I met to brands to try to do some collaborations. There's a couple that maybe got off the ground and a lot of them, you know, maybe got part of the way, but again, like so many, you know, with corporate, there's so many layers and things get kind of axed, like you never know. And so again, there's too many variables out of my control that, I, so like for me, like, that this was not sustainable either, you know, cause it's like, I, I don't have control over this. And there's also like, how do I, how do I get, you know, credit for this as well as also really truly like uh, some, some sort of what's the paid model behind this, you know? And so I, uh, right. I, I realized I was like, you know what, this is, this is too difficult. You know, like I was do, doing some consulting, creating products that also wasn't really the right, right way. I felt like, cause it's like, again, you're not, you know, I can, besides not just getting the credit, but it's just like, you're my, for me as a creative, it's like the vision, it's like not just the vision, but it's like really driving it all the way through. And when you're consulting, you really don't, you're kind of like, it's like, you're like a touch point. You're like, Oh, here, here's this. And there's something there, do what you want with it. Or I always see what happens, but it's never truly like, you know, how you like envision it to sometimes to be. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think, it was uh, realizing that I was also leading designers and industry people on trips to Kenya or to Africa you know, to source. So the idea was like to be inspired by the, by the cultures, meet the artists and see, witness the impact and, and be inspired by the resources to create more partnerships. Mm -hmm. Again, like I think the concept, yes, people could see things, but again, like how many people were interested in this? Like how big of an impact can this be? Um, you know, I did this also in Bali too. I think it was it was a good exploratory thing, and I, I think, uh, but I, I again, like impact wise, it wasn't something because I'm like I don't need to be like the tour guide either, you know. Like these are things I like to do. I like to show my friends around when they come visit. Everyone has a good time. But is this something I want to do for my job? Not necessarily. You know, not necessarily. You know what I mean? Like I, I can do it, but it's not like the main focus. And I was like, I need to generate. I also need to figure out because I had left corporate already by you know a few 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 years. I was like, okay, I need to figure out something sustainable more like for income, you know, like I can't just be constantly, uh, you know, like giving, you know, and, and not getting the return on like my energy and my, my time and, and my talents. So, um, yeah, like, and it comes back, you know, you know, when we met again, like what I want to say in, in August of 2016 or September, 2016, and we had that sit down talk and I was just trying to figure out, you know, am I, what should I be focused on? You know, I had the, had the photos from the book, like, should I go after creating this book concept, you know, or, you know, do I, you know, I have this brain, I have this social media campaign I created, Love is Project at the time. What do I do with this? Is there anything that I'm left to do about this? Or do I do, do I go after electric scooters? You know, like, I mean, it was, I was kind of a bit, you know, not focused exactly on, on what I should be doing. Cause I, I hadn't been exposed to like all the, you know, the wonders of digital marketing and, and Facebook ads at that time. So yeah. And which, yeah, which and was game changing. Yeah. And I remember that conversation because we had like a two or three hour sit down and, and yeah. a session together. And, you know, we, we, and you are an ideas generator. Like that is something yeah. you don't have any problems doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's actually having more ideas than you need. And mm -hmm. I can imagine that, um, you know, I always talk about like, you know, the most meaningful businesses are born from, you know, your genius zone, right? Which is like your best strengths being, being leveraged as much as possible in that business. You're using uh, your experience, right? And your natural gifts. And also what is, what what can be aligned with your values right and your personality type and and i i'm i'm curious to learn like during times of when um idea generation is your superpower and when mm -hmm. it isn't right because mm -hmm. it's almost like you can't use that superpower for every problem you have in a business and 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 how do you almost grapple with the balancing act of like allowing yourself to do this thing you naturally do, which is come up with tons of ideas all the time versus sticking to what actually, you know, or sticking to what's working and finding a more evolved way uh, to make that better instead of actually replacing it with more and more ideas. 
Yeah. I mean, it's a fine balance. I think I've gotten better at it over time. Like again, like, you know, by kind of doubling down on this business and, you know, financially my investment as well as my time. And it's also, it's like, I'm not going to just move on and do something totally different, you know, like diver, you know, divergent. I think it's like, it's helped me really focus on the business, learn other parts of the business I, I, I was weekly on before. And now like I, you know, whether because my mother, her background is the CFO of finance operations, she's really brought that structure and other stuff to me. So like, I can really, I think that was the missing piece in my life in a lot of ways. Cause it's like, as a creative, like I have all these ideas I can go and keep on doing like execute up to a certain point, but then like, how do you take that, evolve it into a financially viable, successful you know, business, you know? And, and, it, and I think that like, it was like taking the time and just be like, Hey, you know what? Like, uh, no more like no more just like running around yes I was still running around like making stuff with the artisans but I think like especially this past like year and a half because or especially with this pandemic too like nowhere to go you I, I work with artisans luckily I have laid the foundation so I can work remotely and it's not a big deal but I can like sit and like work through and shore up all their our systems and anything you know like tighten up tighten up everything what we need to do to be able to scale to get to that next level so I think it's just you know yeah, it's not, it's not fun. <laughs> you know, it's not stuff like that. I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is so amazing. I, uh, I've learned how to do, you know, read all these dashboards and how to analyze this or whatever, but it's, it's definitely necessary because like, um, I think I see a lot, like sometimes people in the industry I'm in, like in fashion or a creative, it's like they have, again, same kind of thing. They have the ideas, but they don't have, they don't have the other stuff like the business side of it or the, um, digital marketing experience because all this stuff is relatively new like when i left corporate in 2012 facebook ads was it like brand new or even barely even existed so i think like it's like you have to like always be ready you have to learn otherwise you're going to be a designosaur you know it's like and that's not right. like i, re I remember yeah exactly and otherwise um i remember like uh my my first boss at my company, I remember years ago, like 20 years ago, she kind of was very flippant about kind of like, oh, I, I don't even know how to really turn a computer or I don't even know how to like, and I was just like, remember thinking, I was like, wow, you're screwed. <laughs> you know, like you're like when time, time goes on, like this is not okay. Like how you, you have to be able to be fluent in all this kind of language and other stuff to be able to direct a team, all this kind of stuff. It's like, and that's, I remember thinking that at that time, I was like, mm -hmm. I don't want this to happen to me at this point, thinking that, oh, I don't need to learn this, or this is something I don't know. No, you have to learn it. And it, it's like, even my mother, she's like 70 going to classes on Facebook, teaching, you know, te learning. It's, it's like that, that's the type of like, oh, like you, you can't get left behind. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, that and and I think it's it's a it's a learning lesson for us because we tend to sometimes give up on things when it feels hard and misdiagnose mm -hmm. it uh, because that mm -hmm. was kind of in, in a way through that conversation we had in yeah. Bali was that there was a moment of like I remember you saying oh maybe I should just like pack up shop and just like kind of cut my losses you know on yeah. the Lovers Project and, yeah. go and and just have electric scooter something completely yeah. different which it sounds yeah. I mean like a great you know and of course I'm a big believer in like some things do need to be put to bed you know. Know, if it just isn't yeah. working anymore but there's yeah. th there's there's a i think a, a necessary pause that we sometimes need to take which is like am i really just giving up on or, or saying no to this project because it really just doesn't sing to me anymore and i'm just not at all inspired or is there an obstacle that i need to actually as part of my being having humility you know to actually go maybe i don't know everything i need to know and people can support me because i remember introducing you to mm. a few yeah. people that support yeah. you into yeah. that next yeah. level and for you to then then all of a sudden embrace this idea that, okay, I can still stick to what I'm good at and just be mm -hmm. able to sort of enroll the right people to help me with things like Facebook ads or ads or the e-commerce side of things that I'm completely unfamiliar with and continue still to be like a visionary, right, in my work. And, and what do you yeah. think was like, what do you think was like the, the mindset shift that you had to have in all, in all, in order to kind of double down on continuing with something even though it felt uncertain like what kept you sticking with it was it your your purpose behind the business was it the fact that you had all these artisan women depending on you like what were some of the things that made you stick stick to persevering onto this path 
Um, yeah. So I think back to what you were saying before was like, you know, like I think before, like I was like siloed in my own world of like how I thought like you were supposed to create a brand, you know, like back in the day, you know, so that I think that was like limiting my way to be able to see how like new ways to do it. So, and I think after having that talk about the digital marketing thing, I was like, oh, wow, open my eyes. I got to get on this. Um, and I think like that already, it's just like, once I could see numbers or just even hear what those numbers were like. And I just realized I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm told I'm doing this the wrong way. I need to complete, I need to change my, like shift this and like, and think about it. Uh, just, just be more confident, you know, like, like, Hey, you know what? Like all these young kids, you know, all these young kids are doing this and, you know, Hey, I've been in the industry for this long, have all this experience, all these contacts, all these are, you know, like, um, why, there's no reason why I can't also execute this and, 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 and equally, if not even better, you know what I mean? Like I, and I think like, and also too, like, I mean, I'm competitive. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Like, no, I know. I mean, like, I just, I just sort of sit there. Like, I, you know, I've had people like, again, like, doubt me or think like, you know, even my mother at points with this whole project before I had, you know, relaunched this as an e-com brand before she came on board. She was just like, I don't know, like, you should give up, go get a job, go figure, you know, like, I think it's, and like, I, you know, for me, or like other people saying stuff or like doubting me ever, like, haha, like, you know, just like, being dismissive or whatever and i'm like oh no like i'm the person who's like oh no hold my drink let me go uh, let me report back to you in like another year and stuff and let you know what's going on so i mean i think there's something something to that too but like but also like i believe in what i do like i i do believe i can see the impact with the women's lives and like being them being able to improve their homes send their kids to school feed their kids and like the the kind of domino effect this has and like mm -hmm. to be able to see that and scale that in not just Kenya, but to be able to do this in Indonesia. And like, we're a small company, a startup. It's like, can't like, can you imagine like we can do this even like so much bigger? And it's like, for me, it's like, I don't have, I don't own factories. You know, people work from home. Like this is the whole thing is a work from home model, which is great. And I think, and, and that's good. Cause it's like, when you, I don't, I don't have a thing where I need to be owning anything and build, you know, like a thing, you know, I don't have that weird tie to ownership necessarily so it's like mm. hey you know like we can help invest in like oh like having giving the women agency or the artists and agency to tell us what they need like so in java like to the, uh, to the mother daughter team we work with they're like oh you know we're, we have a lot of pollution in our village we want to be able to clean this up we can start this uh waste bank and do re recycling um and then it cre it'll create more jobs and, and so they, we funded that and now it's created 12 jobs the village is clean now we're going to try to roll this out in some other villages it's like amazing but they took the initiative and it's like that's the right. idea like i want to have it's like it's like we want to give agency to the artisans to be like okay this is what you know like what are your problems what do you need like okay you need sewing machines okay we'll help fund this or like okay we want you need solar electricity so you guys so we can set up some like more uh online education tutors or something in your villages okay we're gonna we'll, we'll make that happen you know but like that's mm. like i don't i i like so i think like it's it's trying to really um you know not just be like put a band-aid on the situation it's just really okay like having creating the jobs but then also like giving them the tools or whatever they need mm. to really get to that next level and then kind of like yeah you know, yeah yeah, yeah I, I love the way you think about that because you're right like a lot of sort of traditional supply chain um you know and that's mm. why i love your your inaugural business the supply change right because you are yeah. trying mm. to, to change, change this dinosaur of like this this capitalism approach to retail you know and, mm. and selling where we take advantage of third world countries where we actually gain a lot more as the privileged western mm. person than mm -hmm. the people that are actually making the products and you've managed to kind of create that co collaboration uh, where people feel that, you know, there, there, there's a reason to work with you. And there's also re uh, th that they're bettering their own lives and they have to autonomy over these decisions rather than you're the head boss, you know, and they just mm -hmm. have to supply all the stuff for you. And then you get to benefit only, right, from all mm -hmm. the revenues. Now, I, I know that one of the biggest topics, because, you know, I get that a lot from people who are interested in working for nonprofits, and you obviously have a lot of experience in this realm, uh, but even generally people that want to do good in the world, right? They call themselves change makers. They want to have meaningful, um, projects that give back and contribute mm -hmm. to a cause they believe in. Mm -hmm. It all sounds really dreamy and romantic and lovely. But one of the, the struggles that they feel is that how like this guilt, right? I don't know if you've ever experienced mm -hmm. that the guilt of making money while apparently making meaning. And to mm -hmm. me, it's also because there's not that many good examples out there 
about mm -hmm. right cha for charities and nonprofits and you know w I I I am I a good person if I actually make money from this philanthropy you know philanthropy project like how did you sort of think this through in the sense of making money and making meaning that sort of sat right for you um, you know, that was something I struggled with a lot, especially like 10 years ago when I was trying to like ideate like what I was going to do next. I really felt like I was like oh, was with the supply chain. Originally, I was like, oh, it's, it's a nonprofit. I'm like connecting artisans with them and blah, blah. But it's like, you know, coming back from like, you know, being working in corporate so long. I'm a cat, you know, I was capitalist. I'm and also I'm Chinese. Like I'm a cat. Like, what, why am I trying to pretend to be something I'm not? You know, like I was just like what I know how to do is how to create cool good products and sell them you know, like i need to you know and i felt like i was like not in, i was like embarrassed or i was like i you know, like not wanting to embrace that like i was trying to like shed this like okay i don't need him i don't want to make more stuff i'm not going to do you know like i i can't i need to be able to just like help these people you know and again which is like you know what i remember this like fairy tale thing i read as a little kid called the beggar princess she she like you know gave all her money away and then she was like totally broke <laughs> I just sat there. I was like, "Oh no, wait, is this going to happen to me?" You know, like I was like, "This is I can't." I like, and I think you know, she was like, "I had a cushion for a while. You know, I had a corporate job. I was dabbling, so it wasn't like I had this like I had to make money because I had a job. You know, so I was kind of doing stuff on the side. But once you left, it was just like, oh my gosh, like I can't. You know, I'm not like a I'm not a trust funder. You know, I, I I'm like I need to figure out how to make a make a living. You know, and actually, because uh, at the end, it's like if you don't like you know, love is like self love. If you can't love yourself, you can't take care of yourself or you can't take care of others. Um, and I, I really wasn't doing that. I was like really just trying to like expand all this energy, but like kind of spinning my wheels without getting, you know, what, what, what I actually needed to, to be able to thrive, you know? So um, yeah. So I think I, for me, like, I really do think like a for-profit social enterprise, I, there's no reason why you can't start a company and do good. You know what I mean? Like that should be every company's like mantra. Like it doesn't have to be a non-profit because it's a non-profit. Right. You're also begging for money. You're asking like, for charity donations all the time. That's not empowering. You know what I mean? So it's just like, why am I trying to preach this way of doing something? Well, I'm, I'm going to be the one asking for donations. Like for me, like that was also a conflict. So I was like, you know, I think uh, with, with the success of, the love is project is a social media campaign creating that and, and the original jobs from from that first thing i was like okay you know what this this is something like i feel like i need to figure out how to restructure and again like i think talking you know talking to you like to be able to like okay how to make how to make money and it's like sometimes people are always asking like oh how much are you donating all this okay you know we're paying the artisans we're paying the art you know artisan groups to manage that the material costs we have digital market spent you know advertising costs that's normally like at least 25 percent of anyone's budget this is across the board for any e-com company it's not hidden stuff you know you have you know fulfillment centers picking packing shop you know like the the people who are on board that's you know maybe probably another 25 percent then you have another percentage for like some margin and then we give back on top of that so like mm. if people were saying are always wondering like oh how much how come you're not giving like 100 percent all this I'm like because you went then that's not a business then you go out of business anyone who says that to like who always like ask these kind of questions i always sit there i'm just like you obviously don't know how to run a business <laughs> so like because yeah. you have to you have to make it work like you're like you look yeah. at it, you're like okay here's your cost for goods and this is like you work your way up and like this is how this is the margin we need to be able to to be a successful company and be able to continue our mission so yeah, yeah. and a business is supposed to be profitable if you're not doing that then it's not a business you know it's yeah it's a and, charity, um, and that's fine too if that's a, a choice that yeah, you make that's to that's yeah, totally yeah, fine yeah uh but yeah. It's, it's also let's not pretend that it's a, yeah. a, a business right that's going to feed yeah. your children yeah. and whatever right because i, yeah. I think uh, what what it is as well as is people have a misconception about what money is right and money yeah. we live in a we live in a world that money makes the world go around and i think the only thing we can control is how we use that money and what we yeah. you know, what's the energy behind making that money that can be meaningful to us and meaningful to the collaborators and partnerships that we build and, yeah. and not, and not just shun money because money is what creates freedom. Money is what creates change in communities. And I think, you know, with your philosophies and values of how you give back and, and, enroll the people that you work with in all these different countries to empower them with that with that wealth is, um, you know, a, a great way that you've balanced out making meaning and making money, which I really love. Thanks. All right. I want to talk a little bit about your recent feature on Shark Tank because one of the the, the breakout star 
<laughs> of the show was your mother, Gladys. Mm -hmm. She is the sweetest, cutest little thing. I've pictured her in my head every time you've talked about her before, but watching her in real life kind of thing, you know, on like she is just uh, amazing. And, and she, I mean, people just fell in love with her. Now, has it been difficult to work with family? Because that is a, a sensitive area. I mean, I bought a home with my brother once and that was something I will never do again. <laughs> Uh, but how do like how has it been working with your mother and how do you sort of navigate right like the moments that she might become your mother and say what the hell are you doing and you know because you, you can't if you had a CFO you just hired from wherever you could fire them you could like, mm -hmm, not yeah. have to deal with the emotional attachment and trauma <laughs> of what that means when she says something critical how have you been able to sort of work um, with boundaries with family. That's been very difficult, actually. It's gotten better more lately, but like I am at home right now with her right now. So, and I mean, yes, for sure. Like it's um, really, you know, she is, can be very critical and all that stuff. So, but you know, um, it's, it's, she calls it tough love, you know, I think, you know, but I think I'm it's interesting because it's, because, because it's like, you know, my, I, she, we work with a bunch of freelancers and agencies and it's always kind of funny because it's like how she talks is so somewhat abrasive and very brash. I compare it to Ke Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank, like Mr. <laughs> Wonderful. When we were binge watching, I was like, oh my gosh, mom, she's just like, you're just like him. Like really that's something you would say, you know, but again, like that's not like what, you know, people, yeah, like freelance people need to be spoken to, like, you know, and it's like, for me, like, I've been spoken like this to all my life, you know, I have to explain to the agencies, like, oh, you know, your mom just yelled at me. I was like, well, you know, just don't mess up, you know, but then also, like, my mom has yelled at me all my life. So, don't, you know, like, just once, okay, you know, like, but it, it's, it, it's gone much better now. I think now that we have more things under control, it was a bit of a, you know, cluster for a while because there were so many things that were just like not the systems were not in place it was just a bit of a mess we had to clean a lot of stuff up so I think there was a lot of frustration on her end sometimes so um now that now that things are better I feel like um yeah hopefully things can be sm smoother and she can just focus on more on the higher higher level stuff and then and, you know we'll you know hopefully maybe bring someone on 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 in the future to 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 tie it to on a more of a day-to-day -day kind of thing, but, but it's been so yeah. great. It's actually, I'm so thankful for her to be here to help me with this. Cause there's no way I could have gone into this level without her because I mean, I can, I can do a lot, but there's so much that like, um, we're, you know, there were so many things that were falling through the cracks because I'm not, and I'm not an organized person in certain ways. Like I can get things done, but it's not, um, uh, you know, uh, I'm not a spreadsheets person, you know? Right. And right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're a visionary and you're an ideas person. So you can't yeah. be both <laughs> <And> <laughs> the opposite as much as it's yeah. as annoying as it is. It's like, well, she is the one that grounds your ideas into much more yes. organized fashion. Right. It, and exactly. You, guys, like, you know, uh, very quickly, how did you guys kind of prepare for something so big like Shark Tank? And, um, you know, I read somewhere when you wrote the medium article that, you know, you, mm -hmm. you made it a project between the both of you to like binge watch every episode of Shark Tank. But what were some of the key things you 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 felt were really helpful for you to to show up like confident to pitch to these sharks that could totally reject you what were some of the things that you guys did to kind of prepare for that to being on stage at, at shark tank well i've never pitched to investors ever so because i self-funded my company so this is also a new thing and like you know to do it on national tv is a whole nother thing um and i had never watched a full episode of shark tank you know i had watched clips i've never had a tv you know i've traveled a lot i've always been doing my thing so like i i had seen a clip like in, in mid may because uh our mutual friend ben from water his friends mentioned introduced me to his friends from the yellow hammock company and they were on shark tank uh and got a one million dollar investment from Daniel from Kind Bars. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's great. You know, like they're interested in social enterprises. Maybe I'll throw my hat in the ring. Um, and so, um, and I did, you know, it was like seven months ago. So it was happened really quickly. Like suddenly, like I was in the application process, you know, there's videos, due diligence, you know, like it's a lot of, it becomes like a full-time job essentially. So mm -hmm. like, uh, and, and yeah, because I hadn't watched, you know, like I was like, okay, and I sat there thinking, I was like, should I have my mom on? Because originally I had just, I, had, I applied myself. And I was like, in case they throw me some curveball finance question or something, I, I need a wing, wing, wing woman to, to, you know, and also I know she's very, you know, can go rogue. I thought also, oh, you know, this could make for entertaining TV, you know? <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Why not? You know? And so, 
um, sure enough, but like, so we prepared and it was just like, just watching all these episodes. I was Googling like all these articles, YouTube videos, getting to know every single one, like literally like I, it was like Shark Tank crash course, basically. I, I, I feel like I know so much about it and um, just trying to figure out like, um, yeah, getting a public speaking coach just to, you know, to, to tighten up my like pitch and all that stuff. So I think, I think it was all really helpful all these things like I would have wanted to do at some point anyway for my business like everything we did was a good uh nothing went to waste you know so I think it just like mm. helped me grow faster <laughs> because yeah. it was it was uh needed you know yeah so um and I think with Shark Tank I think um yeah like I mean it's it's amazing actually like the effect of it you know like I just being on we were on like three weeks ago you know our sales have like skyrocketed like the people you know reaching out all this other all these other opportunities that are coming out of that you know even though we didn't get a deal and which probably maybe is for the best anyway again like my mom said mm -hmm. at the end of the episode saying like we don't have to share the profits with the sharks now it's true now it's like you know we can still continue to drive the vision of it give back to the, you know we hire the artisans as well as do our give backs on top of it so and and you know and and unless yeah. we maybe later find it uh, an investor who's you know more aligned with our vision like an impact investor investor then like maybe that that could work but otherwise we're we're actually fine uh growing on our own right now too so hmm. organically so yeah and, and yeah. i love that you you know you gave it an experiment just to be like i wonder yeah. what it would feel like to you know do this and and, and see if an yeah. investor is is a important part of you know our model and and there's no yeah. right or wrong way right it's so now that you know yeah. what investors yeah. you're looking for and what you want it's just about having that happy marriage with the right one right the right fit uh that is gonna still allow you to do things the way that you want to do things because obviously getting an investor sometimes can feel like getting a boss right so yeah there's a trade-off there's a sacrifice or I, I i guess i would call it like an exchange right like yeah you're willing to exchange maybe part of your vision and part of your profits for mm -hmm. um growing bigger but sometimes it's about questioning do we even need to grow to that point at this at, at this yeah and that and that really thinking about it now like you know restructuring our whole company for five percent of the business for 250k it was really you know is it really worth it not really if we already have some of the money in the bank it's 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 mm -hmm. you know and i i think but you know what but it was great you know honestly it's like my mom and i we've had a very kind of tumultuous kind of like intense relationship and over the years so i do think like i binge watching and do shark tank for three months and like being here and like working through this whole thing with her and um has brought us closer together so really like i'm thankful uh, thankful for shank shark tank for bringing me and my mom closer together so that was like the yeah. other side effect from it so yeah yeah that's lovely yeah. um mm -hmm. uh, last question i have for you uh before we end the interview because i think mm -hmm. that um you've done so much already that you know in my head i'm like what more can you do like <laughs> What more can you have time for yeah. to do? Um, now, yeah. you know, you you have, I mean, I've seen you from the beginning grassroots days of like, yeah. you had a photo book, you used to just interview yeah. people uh, about what love meant. I remember mm -hmm. writing a couple of definitions for you and yeah. it's grown into this amazing mm -hmm thing that I think you never expected it to be, you know, like how, 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 how big it was, right. And, and yeah. where it's going, mm -hmm. you know, you've been on Oprah magazine, you've been featured on celebrity risks, like Jeff Bridges and Anne mm -hmm. Hathaway and so much mm -hmm. more. Um, like what is, what's next from here? Like, you know, what are, what's the next sort of um, vision for the Love is Project that, that excites you, but also scares you a little bit? <laughs> I mean, what's so amazing about this is that like everything is so spontaneous and I don't know what's coming. So it's always like, oh my gosh, and this is happening or this person's wearing, oh my, you know, like this opportunity. So it's really, you know, I, which I love, it's kind of like these like unexpected like surprises, you know, and then I, like kind of jumping at those opportunities and, and like being present for that. So I think I just take everything like day at a time kind of thing. So, I mean, you know, really excited about this like for you know that we're in the you know month of march like uh facebook and instagram are going to be profiling me uh for women's month as a women entrepreneur and um Amazing. this is really incredible and you know this happened before shark tank uh the initial process so just excited to see what happens from that um and and yeah we we so many other things kind of coming down the pipeline that we'll be like announcing throughout the year but i think this is like the next one up that's pretty um you know 
for yeah, you know, congr- congratulations on that. That's so, pretty big, and, so. and more people enrolling into that that vision as well. Um, mm-hmm. Now, if people are interested to take a look at all the awesome creations that you've done with the different artisans, because you've got uh, different designs, mm-hmm. right? You've got dog mm-hmm. collars. You've got, mm-hmm. um, you know, obviously I'm I'm a I'm a, a, you know a fan of the Bali line, <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, being yeah. the, I've I've got the, the mm-hmm. silver bracelets, mm-hmm. I've got the original mm-hmm. red one, um, but you've got some awesome different colors for like India and Vietnam and all these different places. Where, where can people find the, uh, you know, the products to support your organization and, and where, uh, you know, one of your lovest bracelets on their wrist? Uh, yeah, so we mainly sell direct to consumers on our website. So it's uh, loveisproject.com. You can find us there. We're on Instagram as well and Facebook. Um, and, you know, we also sell to retailers. So we're, you know, around the U.S. as well as in, in Bali, Indonesia, at, at Bamboo Inda and a few other stores. So um, I think, you know, people can find us in, in, in a few places, but definitely like the Internet's probably like the, the easiest place to, to go. So. Okay, and we will put all the links on the show notes as well in our blog. Uh, but you can totally find Chrissy. I love her Instagram. Uh, so I think you'll really enjoy following her journey coming up with, um, you know, all the different exciting adventures that she can't, uh, she doesn't know what's around the corner, but you can come along for the ride. <laughs> you follow her on her journey. Um, as a lasting parting thought and a message for viewers watching this, um, what would be the one thing you want to say for people that are sort of in that midst of taking a leap, but not quite sure, because of course, nothing is ever a hundred percent certain and they're going should I trust myself should I go for it what is a a message that you would love to share um, if they're going through that that crossroad of taking that leap yeah, I mean, I think it's like taking thoughtful steps. So, you know, I think it's just being like, okay, what are my strengths? What am I good at? Maybe talk to some friends. What you think, you know, like, what are you missing? Like, what are you missing to be able to, like, what's holding you back from wanting to do this? And then kind of like working through, like, what, what are my limiting beliefs? Like, what could trip me up? What do I need to learn? What do I need to learn? What do I need to research thoroughly before I decide if I want to get into this industry? It's like, is it if it's especially if it's new industry and you don't know the landscape, or even if it's an industry you're already f- familiar with, like, and you might know the the white spaces. It's like, okay, like, who else is doing this? Is there anyone else doing this better? Like, what do I need to look at? Like, where do I fit in this? And like, what can I add? And I think it's like the more due diligence you do, and more like. Uh, your 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 and it's stuff you can learn prior to like whether it's digital marketing all this kind of stuff it's like things i wish i had done or learn more of before i launched you know because like once the train gets going you can't stop like it's like going so so i think so if you can learn as much as you can before you go press go like i would i would definitely recommend that like in hindsight that's that's what i would have done so mm. and also, you know, part of your story was learning, learning when you need to as well. And yeah. embracing, <laughs> embracing that you'll never know it all. And, you know, and practicing that yeah. sort of humility to and know that it takes a village. It takes a village of community and support systems to to launch a thriving business. It's not a silo isolated game. And I think more and more we're um, definitely embracing that we don't want to be alone <laughs> in doing big yeah. things in the world that we can and, yeah. people in our lives to do it. Yeah. And it hasn't been easy. Like we lost, I've lost tons of money. You know, I, you know, I have, yeah, on Shark Tank, you can hear like I have, I have a small business loan, which isn't, you know, small interest rate, lower, lower interest rate, EIDL 3%, which is fine, you know, but it's like, yeah, I've had made mistakes through, you know, agencies, digital marketers, other people like losing tons, tons of money, you know, and other, other mis mishaps throughout the way, you know? So, uh, I mean, there, there have been very, very, very stressful times where I was like, okay, do I need a closed shop? Do I need it? You know, do I, mm. or I've, I was like burning the candle, both ends, totally wiped out, you know, doing, trying to do way too many different things. Uh, and I was just like, um, and I think it was just like learning from that and being like, you know what, like, I need to, I need to like, you know take it down in a couple notches <laughs> and then and just yeah. learning how to so, do it better. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah I've exactly. Had, I've had moments like that as well, where it was the turning point. Actually, I it needed it to happen for me to actually almost cut my losses ahead of time and yeah. do it better the next round. Yeah. It doesn't always mean you're, you're out of the game. You know, I think yeah. perseverance is just about um, having the innovation and creativity yeah. to not make it personal and to stay yeah. curious about what can mm. be better. Right. Which is totally um, been your, your transparent and very honest story, which I, yeah. Love. I think also too, it's just like, you know, like it's entrepreneurship. It's not easy. It's not glamorous. Like, yes, you, you can look on the outside and you're like, oh my gosh, this looks amazing. Or what you've guys, you've been doing or whatever. But like, I think it's just like so much is like really, you know, blood, sweat, tears and stuff. So I think like really like, um, not like, 
if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. So it's like there's there I, each year, even if I'm, I, there's like you know, stressful times, there's like wins. It's just trying to focus on the pot. It is like trying to like focus on being grateful and and having like uh, you know I'm focusing on the positive things, you know, so you're not totally stressed. You know, like the, when the bad things yeah. do happen, like it's, yeah. it doesn't take you down. So. Yeah. yeah. And focusing on the progress because it's not always the goals that um, we learn from. Right. And so yeah. Yeah, I really love love that notion of um, enjoying the journey rather than just always the outcomes and results and the big numbers. Right. And those come yeah. by default, I think, when you're yeah. um, enjoying the process. Yes. <laughs> Thank you yeah. so much for coming on and, and well, sharing your thanks. story. I can't wait for yeah. people to watch this and get to know you more. And congratulations on all the great things that are happening for the Love is Project. I can't wait to keep witnessing all the big things you're doing in the world. Great. Thanks, Lydia. I can't wait to see you in person again, too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay.